I'm Winifred Helton Harmon. I'm an artist photographer and I'm having my show here at the Center for Art and Wood. My show is about how trees inspire us in our daily lives and how integral they are to our lifelong existence and well-being. What would our planet look like without trees? How would we feel? It's all about understanding the cost of clear-cutting and deforestation. When you first walk into my show, you come face to face with a video of clear cuts that I witnessed over the years. Through these images, I'm trying to express all that we have to lose when we lose our forests. All we're left with are barren, dry, desolate earth, a howling wind, and the silence is deafening. My show includes 13 large format photographs, three photo and glass castings, and two sculptural installation pieces. I'm trying to express the magic that forests bring to us. The photographs were taken in the United States, the redwood forests in Northern California, Mirror Woods, the southern forests of the United States in Florida, the Poconos, the Lackawanna State Park in Pennsylvania, as well as in my hometown in Bethlehem. The reason why I wanted these large scale was to immerse the viewer into the scenes and to help them to feel a connection with the trees and the forests. All of the photographs were printed with archival inks and on 100% cotton rag archival paper so that no trees were killed making the prints. The creation of the glass photo pieces was an extremely difficult process. My husband, James Harmon, who is an artist and glass master in his own right, helped me bring these pieces from an idea into reality. It began with James and I making our first glass photo pieces at Pilchuck Glass School back in 2015. Having learned a great deal from that experimentation, we created these new pieces, beginning with the making of a glass decal, which was then fired onto a piece of sheet glass, then placed in a mold in a kiln. Then several ladles of molten glass was poured over the photo and into the mold. Once the glass was cooled down, it was placed in an annealer and annealed for four days. The pieces were then cut and trimmed with diamond saws and finished to a polished surface. The gifts of the tree, log, and photo piece. I wanted people to realize some of the beautiful gifts that trees give us. Fruit, flowers, seed pods, their bark, to feel a tree's inner being to feel the heartwood of a tree. It took over a year to find the perfect log, but I found it. At the time, I was completely unaware that I had selected a ginkgo. The ginkgo is the oldest living tree on earth. They are revered for their beauty and their longevity and are considered a living fossil, unchanged for 200 million years. Humans have the ability to help a species survive, to help themselves survive together with nature. Forest chair is a very special piece to me. It was my idea to bring to life the enchantment that I feel every time I'm in the forest. 
As a child, I loved being in nature and hearing the animal sounds, the wind blowing through the trees. I always wished that I had a soft, comfy chair made by the forest that would allow me to become a part of the forest and to watch all the wondrous activities that were taking place all around me. I have included the nature sounds because they are very much a part of a living forest ecosystem. All the elements that I use to create the forest chair are natural, real objects that one would find if you were walking through a forest scape. Different colored mosses, pine cones, seed pods, branches with different colored lichen. All these are objects that came from my collection and my husband's as well that we have gathered over the years. I've been in love with photography since I got my first brownie camera as a little girl. Uh, I proceeded to drive my family crazy because I took pictures of them all the time. <laughs> but from that point on, I was hooked. I have always seen things as a photographer. I've had several internships and residencies. They have helped me throughout my career to develop the series of work that is being presented today. The other thing that I do in life at this point in time is I work at my wonderful friend Arlene Brockle's handmade chocolate shop in Bethlehem called the Chocolate Lab. She has two chocolatiers, but my job is to have the fun and paint them. I hope it's not lead-based paint. <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually a food-grade luster made by the confectionery industry to be put on foods, so it is edible. Arlene was very excited to make the acorns and the leaves because she wanted it to fit in perfectly with the theme of the entire show. It has been a great honor to work with revered curator Ricardo Vieira. When Ricardo and I began to think about the show over a year and a half ago, it became an important point to not just put together a collection of separate images, but we wanted to create an installation. We wanted the viewer to be able to walk away with having had a profound experience of the meaning of forests. When people at the opening came up to me and said that my show made them feel serenity and peace and beauty of the forest, it was exactly what I had hoped for. The ultimate question that I hope my exhibition brings to people's minds is, do we preserve these great resources or do we allow them to continue to be destroyed? Ultimately, it's our choice. We have the power to save our planet, to make the planet a better place for not only ourselves, but our children and future generations. So it's up to us. <laughs>